Hello and welcome to another Procreate tutorial where today I'm going to show you how you can create this scarecrow painting design. As always, there's links to everything that you're going to need in the requirements down below. And that's basically the canvas size, the palette, as well as a really simple, easy stencil guide to help you sort of draw this out and get your position in just right. Now this design, just so you know, does have a really nice loose painting aesthetic to it. We're going to use the black burn brush that's built into Procreate and you'll create all these really lovely sort of scrapey painting lines. So have some fun with it. It's not meant to be super hyper realistic or anything like that. Have fun with it and just enjoy the process. As always, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram when you're done and share them with my Discord community as well. It's completely free to join and there's links to both in the description down below. If you want even more tutorials from me though, you can come and join me over on Patreon where I post three exclusives every single month to a catalogue of over 80 now at the time of recording. So if you want to get access to that full catalogue, hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And with all that said, Enjoy this tutorial and let's get started. So once you've created your canvas and you've added in today's stencil guide, I've created a guide just simply because of the complexity of some of the sort of angles and shapes with this in here. And we're gonna go ahead and go straight up to our actions. We're gonna to go to the canvas tab and we're gonna turn on the drawing guide. Once we edit that drawing guide, we're gonna go ahead and change the grid size to 500. I always do this so that we've got a four by four grid. So you can just go about sort of laying things out on the screen. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to our background color. We'll change it to the bottom right color in the palette. And once we do that, you'll also be able to see that the guide itself has uh, two different areas. It's got black outlines and it's got white outlines. So we'll work with those later on. We're then going to go ahead and we're going to make sure we've got an empty layer and our color is set to the color in the top right of the palette. We're going to go to our brush and we're going to go into organic and we're going to use the wild grass brush. Now I'm not sure if mine has been tweaked in any way, but it seems to want to always go horizontal, but that's fine. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to run my pen up and down this edge over here and then just trying to create like a couple of little extra higher mounds of grass that's fine so it doesn't have to be fully even and then I'm just going to grab my cursor I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 45 degrees twice so it's 90 total I'm going to position it down here and we want to position it somewhat so that it runs a little bit sort of into this mid point here of the bottom row here so we can see a little bit of the legs of the scarecrow and then we're going to tap on our cursor when we're done now I'm going to go ahead and swipe that layer to the left straight away and duplicate it. And the bottom one out of the two, I'm going to grab our cursor, we're going to move it up. You may want to flip it horizontal just so it's the opposite to the one in front. And if you've moved it up ever so slightly, what we're then going to do is go to our adjustments, we're going to go to hue, saturation and brightness, and we're going to go ahead and just brighten it up a tiny bit and drop the saturation down as well. So we've gone up to 55% and we've gone down to around about 40% there on our saturation and we can grab our cursor we can mess around with these two creating a little bit more of a gap potentially between them but grabbing both swiping from left to right on both and maybe just making sure we hit that midpoint again of that bottom row here so that the legs can stand out of the actual ground itself so i'm going to move mine down to around about here and i'm going to tap on my cursor when i'm done let's now move on to the scarecrow so we're going to go ahead and we're going to create two new layers that sit in between our two layers of grass and we'll swipe from left to right on both and we'll group them together we can call this scarecrow or you can just leave it it's totally up to you but once we call it scarecrow we're going to go to the bottom layer out of the two we're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here at the bottom of the third column from the right and we're going to switch our brush into the main brush for today which is going to be the option of drawing and the black burn brush now I'm going to set mine down to the 2% marker here so I can get a good solid outline and press with some pressure. And we're going to go ahead and just create the guide here. So we're going to create the legs of our scarecrow that run into the grass. And you'll see because of the way we've layered it, they nicely now run and just fade into the actual sort of environment, which I think is very cool. We'll link them up at the bottom just so that they are linked. And of course, we will link it here at the bottom too. And we're going to go ahead and make sure that we make our way down the edges. I'm going to come down here, I'm pressing quite downwards with this brush because it's quite a messy brush. And we want to just make sure that the bottom here is nice and sort of uneven. We want it to be nice and loose. And I'm going to go down into a bit of a point there on the right. And I'm going to come up and in, into what will be essentially the waist. Then from there, we're just going to go up here. 
We'll go down the arm and again, we're gonna have some longer, messier areas here. And you can let go, you can let your brush get a little bit nice and sort of messy, have that lovely painting aesthetic. I'm gonna come down the shoulder and down. So typically what happens here is with a stencil guide, I always provide a stencil guide if I feel like the, the design has got too much complexity in terms of just basic shapes. I always wanna make sure everybody can do it. Also you'll notice I've just run up and into the hood there but not filled out the whole thing because the hood itself is gonna be a separate layer. All we need to do is make sure we run out into the corner here. And I wanna make sure, as I said, that everybody can do this design. So that's why we have a stencil guide and all a stencil guide is, is me where I've practiced this design because it's not the first time I've drawn this, where I've practiced this design before recording it for you today, I have just made sure that I've created a guide off of it because I'm happy, of course, with my work up until then. So I want to make sure it is how it was in my practices. And then once you're done, you can drag and drop the color in, fill in the, the legs as well if needs be. Get in there and fill them in. And then we should have our lovely sort of silhouette ready to go. And we'll create the rest of the shapes as well. We'll go ahead and on the empty layer above, we'll go to our colors. We're going to go ahead and grab this color here. It's the bottom of the fifth column from the right. And we're going to create the hat shape. Now, what you might want to go ahead and do is, is turn off your main silhouette. And then you can see the shape that you want to create. So we want to run out to here. So we want to come out here and we want to come along this edge. And it's not perfect. It's nice and wobbly. It's you know, been weathered. It's just nice and sort of raggy almost. And then we'll go up the hat along here so just getting those basic shapes in place first and then we can get into the details and then again we'll drag and drop the color in fill in any gaps that we need to and that's looking very good to me if we then bring in our silhouette the only thing we need to make sure is that the corners here are matching up and they are nicely then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the face for a moment because what we're going to do is we're going to go to this color here the bottom of the fifth column we're going to go to our layers and we'll create another new layer and we will drag it underneath the hat. So it's going to sit in between. And then what I want you to do is we're going to go ahead and do everything in this area here, the eyes here. And of course, we're going to leave the areas there in between. So they're going to be our messy kind of facial features. So we're going to go ahead and come down here and make it as kind of spooky as you like. I'm going to go around the back area underneath the bottom of the eye. And then give it some fun angles, go around the nose here and along here. And you can use a different brush if you don't quite fancy this one for your outlining. You can go ahead and use, say, like the monoline brush if that's a little bit more comfortable. But we're just going to get, again, all of our basic shapes in. So hopefully this allows everybody to participate in this tutorial. Now I'm going to create the little sort of dots for the eyes. I'm going to try and make sure they're of even sort of sizing. That looks pretty good to me. Now, before we move on, we need to look at the mouth here. Now, this kind of three zigzaggy lines here. It looks very, very messy, I can, I can appreciate. But if we drop our brush size down to 1%, what we're looking for is this line here. And it just makes its way over to here as well. So it's kind of this line here that runs through the middle. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to inline this one. So we're going to go ahead and draw that in and then every gap around it will become the teeth. So we'll go ahead and we will draw up here. I'll start in the middle and I'm pressing quite down with my brush, just trying to get that line all the way out to the edge there. And I've got to get into these little gaps here and I want it to be nice and messy. Don't make this sort of super perfect, like a proper zigzag or anything like that. It needs to be nice and messy like this. Then the line above, we're gonna draw in sort of like pointed shapes along sort of our line here. So my guide quite literally is a guide at this point. We're just drawing it in. And then these bits here in the gaps are the teeth. So we're gonna go up here and they don't always have to go point to point. You know, they can come a little bit sort of janky, a little bit sort of wonky and not quite meet up to the point. That's fine also. And you can, you don't have to sort of necessarily touch every single time you can leave a gap. You can see I've got these really kind of crazy little sort of spikes here. And then underneath we do exactly the same thing. We bring in our points here and we create those sort of teeth in our design. And you can let your design get a little bit crazy. And again, doesn't have to touch every single time. There's not really a gap there for me to actually touch onto. So that one won't get a tooth. We'll come down here. 
and go along. So this is kind of a good example, really, that something like this, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, the sort of nice messy look to it will actually give it a little bit more character. Now, at this point, you've then got to go ahead and just make sure that we can then get into all of these little gaps above our little triangles and between the nose and the eyes and just fill in all the gaps. And then once we've done so in a minute, we'll round off the face with a little bit more shape. Now, what you could do is just create a link here, drag and drop the color in there. That might be a little bit quicker. I'm going to go back up to the marker here of the 2% just to make sure I can fill in any gaps. And what we'll do is we'll then go ahead and we will round off the face. So we're going to go ahead and go round out here. It's going to go round and we don't want to do that. We want to go round out here and we don't want to sort of run into our teeth and erode into them. We're then going to go up underneath the hat. Now don't worry about this too much. As long as you link there and then drag and drop the color in and then round off the face a little bit more over here too. We'll have everything we need shortly in order to then start to work on the face fully and add the color in and add some shading. I'm going to drag and drop the color into there, make sure it doesn't drop into any teeth in case I've left any sort of crazy gaps. And then I can zoom in. And then at this point, you can then take a look and go to your eraser, potentially tap on your eraser and go to the option of drawing and black burn and then reduce your brush size right down and just see if you want to sort of exaggerate any teeth. So you may want to get in there and just sort of I don't want this one here to be quite as small as it was just because then it, it looks a bit too sort of front tooth only kind of vibe. I want it to have a kind of even set to an extent for what is a creepy scarecrow. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm also going to go ahead and just frown the face in. So I'm going to grab my pencil again and I'm just going to sort of frown the eyes in by just creating little curves like this just to give it a little bit more of an aggressive kind of look to the face. Now at this point, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to our layer, we're going to tap on it and we're going to alpha lock it. We're going to go to our colors and we're just going to really lightly and randomly place color everywhere. So we're going to grab the middle color here in the fifth column. Your brush can move up to the 10% marker and we're going to just literally just run our pen through the shape, creating little areas of random patchiness of different variations of color. I'm just going to go under here, underneath the top of the hat, leaving like this kind of area here of the face maybe a little bit exposed, but run it through the teeth, let the brush go on its side and get really patchy. Then go back to your colors and go to the top color in that fifth column. And then at the top here, we'll bring in some other color, bring in some darker tone in sort of the middle of the eyes, down here, around the edge. We'll definitely go around this edge as well, right up to that edge. Run over a couple of the teeth as well underneath the bottom of the eyes just drag in some color in there because all this is is just all the weatheredness of the material I'm just gonna add that all in there then what we'll do is we'll go to our color and go back to our base color and then we'll add some details by dropping the brush size down to two percent we'll get in here and we'll maybe sort of on the edges of some of these materials of the gaps in the teeth we'll just add like a little edge highlight on one side and just to kind of show that it's not a flat surface as such. So we're just adding that little bit of edge lighting there. It's just a tiny little bit of white. We'll do the same up here on the nose. So just a little bit under there. And there's already quite a lot of white there anyway. So that's good. I'm going to add a little bit of white underneath these little lines here. And I think that's pretty good to me. Now, although right now that looks a bit messy, what we're now going to do is we're going to mask it out. We're going to tap on it and we're going to go to the option of mask. Now our color will change itself to black if it doesn't double tap at the bottom of the disc to do so and go to your brush and go to airbrushing and the soft brush. We're going to make sure this brush has a, a somewhat good size, about sort of 6%. Now we're going to, we're going to just blend it out. We're going to go round all round the edge, all round the edge. And we're going to round off the face into the shape that we want. And we're going to take away a lot of the side area over here. We're going to really narrow that up. Try not to go over the eyes if possible. We're then going to go ahead and underneath the hat, Going to create that lovely shadow under there and then take away even more on the sides a little bit more at the bottom here i'm going to take away a little bit of the face and you can create like a really long fade what i mean by that is, is you can just sort of lightly blend it out at this point just go up to your stencil as well and turn it off just so that you're not distracted by the lines on there and i'm just going to go ahead and in the top corner there take away a little bit more of the lighting a little bit more at the top and then just take Take this all down 
just a little bit so you end up with something like this now the wonderful thing with this being a mask is you can always go back and double tap with white in the top left and if you need to you know you can brighten up say the center of the face you can get back in here and just maybe take it away from the eyes if you drew over the eyes because we need them later on for the glow you should end up with this really creepy face like this next let's go ahead and move up onto the hat and to do that we'll simply just tap on it we'll alpha lock it so we can't paint outside of it we'll go to our colors we'll go ahead and grab this color here it's the middle color in the sixth column your brush wants to be set back to the option of drawing and the black burn. I'm going to go to the 10% marker here and we're going to prioritize a little bit of this color on the top surface. In fact, I'm going to go up to the 28% marker here and I'm just going to bring that color down the edge down here and just let it get nice and scrapey up here and then let that come down the edge. And then trying to just create like a little bit of a sort of darker patch here of sort and then maybe a tiny bit along the edge, just to maybe show some of the, the movement. I'll grab the brush again at 10%, and then where it's got a little dip, maybe I'll just sort of towards the left edge of it, just sort of brighten up the dip, just to create those kind of like creases in the material. Then we'll go to our color. We'll grab the top color in the uh, column here, the sixth column. This is even slightly brighter again, so we're gonna add this color now towards the top edge, and I tip my pen on its side using the 10% brush size, and I'm going to brighten up that top surface, brightening it up, bringing that light down the edge as well, off to the off to the very edge. I'm going to bring that light in up here as well, along this edge. Not as chunky as that, just along the actual edge itself. That looks pretty good to me. We'll then go ahead and try and just, where I've got some little lines in the actual shape, I'm going to bring that down to 2%. I can see that there's almost like a crease running here, so I'll just try and exaggerate that. I'll try and exaggerate this sort of crease here as well. Just add it in literally random color to an extent. We don't want it to be too perfect. It's got this really cool painting look to it. And then we can go back to our base color, which is the bottom of that sixth column again. And you can just go in here now and start to refine any areas that you want to. So maybe where I've got this crease, you know, I can get under there and maybe just right up against my highlight, just start to sort of chip away at it to create these lovely little sort of markings in here. You can get in here and just hack away at it towards the bottom edge so it's not quite so bright around the face as well. You know, and just create random little line marks in there just to create some movement in the material. Next, let's go ahead then and move on to the body. So we'll go down to the body. Now for the body, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna tap on it and I'm gonna clipping mask it to the body. I'm gonna to go to my colors and we're gonna grab this color here. It's the middle of the third column from the right. The brush size probably wants to be around about the sort of 10% marker. And we're going to go ahead and start to introduce some line work for the material and how it flows around the body. So what we've got here is we've got a little bit of a sort of point down here. And on the top edge of it, I'm just going to sort of run up a line, keeping it nice and light to start with, run that up. And then where I'm going to imagine that there's also additional lines in the material, I'm going to run that up as well. On the right hand side over here, I'm going to brighten up the edge of our subject and then just bring in large areas of brown and creasing and movement up towards this waist area. So I'm just looking for anywhere that I can sort of create like a, a bit of creasing or overlap or just movement in the uh, material and how it's not quite a flat surface. And if you keep tipping your pen on its side, it will literally do all the work for you. It will do all these lovely big scrapes and you can let them run up towards your midpoint. Now you don't want them to be super perfect. So I'm gonna go back and undo one of these. I'm gonna let this one like run across and just be a little bit more dominant in there. And then maybe like a large area of brown underneath it, not down into the legs though. We wanna keep the legs nice and sort of dark and shaded. And then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the shoulder up here and we'll just go ahead and start to maybe sort of bring in some lines that just run across into the middle here and then leave a gap and just let that kind of run down into there. And then we'll bring in another line and then another line and just showing how the material is sort of wrapping around this scarecrow. We'll do the same on the opposite side. So a couple sort of more horizontal lines towards the top. And then as you get a little bit sort of further down, you can start to angle the lines out a bit more. And we're, we're going for this kind of creasing in the middle, this kind of overlap of material. And then you can bring a couple more in from here too. And then from there, we can go ahead and create the sleeves. So just in the same principle, you're kind of on the top surface here and looking for all these little sort of marks of our sleeves. You know, can we create like a little line, a little bit of sort of flow of the material up 
in towards the shoulder area. And you don't have to fill in the entirety of the space, you know, leave dark gaps, they're your shadows, they're gonna be awesome. And then in the waist, what we'll do is we'll also go ahead and just, just draw in like a little bit of a band here and, you know, quite firmly kind of just show that there is a bit of a little something, like a little maybe buckle or a little square there in the middle. It doesn't have to be super sort of detailed in any way. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of the square and just leave the band. So it looks like there is like a little bit of rope of sort, just you know, tying it all together. Then we'll do the same on the opposite side. We'll go down this sleeve. We're looking for all of the big creases in the movement in the material. A little something like this. We'll go ahead and just draw in that. That looks lovely. Big shadow there in the armpit. I like that. But what we will do is we will brighten up underneath here though, because that's where our lighting is going to come from. So it's going to come from in behind. So yes, we've got a dark shadow, but we've got this nice bright spot here. I need to do the same over here as well, just on the edge. So just on the edge, introduce some brown. And then taking a look at this, what you can then do is go to your eraser. You can tap on your eraser and use the black burn again, and then just see if you want to sort of uh, take away any shapes. So I've got the black burn at quite a small size here, so I can be really precise with my lines and my cuts. And I'm just going to get in there and just take away a bit more. I want it to have that more of a shadow look to it than anything. In fact, I'm going to bring the brush size up to about 8% and just take away from here, especially around the neck and underneath the neck. I want that to be a little bit darker. Just gonna take away a little bit of color from there. It wraps into the middle, I love that. I'll switch back to my brush and just keep making little tweaks with the brush and the eraser and trying to sort of just create the overlap of the material. But overall, I'm very, very pleased with that. Let's just brighten up this edge a little bit more and chuck in some more color on the right edge of our subject. And maybe a little bit over the shoulder a little bit sort of chunkier here with the color, but then in that armpit area gets a little bit darker. So we're going for something like this. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the layer, we're gonna tap on it and we're gonna alpha lock it. So we can't paint outside of the brown areas now. If we go to our colors and we go upper color, we're gonna just start to add in some different shades of color. So the top of that third column from the right, we're gonna go ahead and brighten up the right side. And then we're looking to look for some of the creases and maybe add in you know, some shadow on the tops of them. If your colors like mine are fading into the shadows, just leave them. Don't go over right up to here and sort of block that in. You want them to naturally just sort of roll around the edge. I'm gonna brighten up that waist area. And we have one more color to add in as well. So don't be afraid now just to really chuck this color on the top here. Obviously leaving a lot of the brown as well, the original base brown. So just adding this on top, streaking some color here. And I'm literally just letting the brush do the work. I'm just allowing that color to sit where it wants. I'm tipping it on its side so it's even messier. It's in its messiest format. I'm gonna go up here, up this edge here, down there, a little bit underneath. Now that little bit here, for example, that's probably a little bit too bright. I don't like how quite bright that is, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it away. And we've got some much needed extra colors in here. We can then go ahead and go to our colors and go to this color here just beside it. It's the top of the fourth column on its own. And we can now add in some further highlights. So we're gonna go ahead and look for those areas that we last painted in and see if we can add in any extra additional colors on top of those. Again, I'm focusing my lighting a little bit more on that right edge and underneath here. And go ahead and just very, very lightly, just see if I can add in some additional brighter areas. I'm gonna go down the sleeve a little bit on the inside I'm going to leave a lot of the body. I'm going to leave a lot of it. A little bit more on the edges here of the sleeves. That looks pretty good. In fact, I'm going to take away one of those. I'm going to leave it just on that top edge. I'm going to add some more on the inside here. And that's looking good. We've got some additional colors. Maybe the odd light, light, light scrape here. Just to add in some minor, minor little sort of specks of color. That's the wonderful thing with this brush is you can just allow yourself to use it in a really sparing way and it will just add tiny little specks of details for you. Now what we want to now do is, is go back to our background for a moment before we start to really finalize some of the highlights. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer and drag it all the way down to the bottom behind both layers of grass right to the very bottom and go to your colors and grab the middle color here in that far right column. Your brush wants to be set to airbrushing and the soft brush and we want to go ahead and increase the brush size up to something nice and large maybe around about 28 to 30 percent and then down here we're going to make that a little bit bigger up to the 30 mark. Down here, we're going to go round in a circular motion, 
We're going to brighten up down here behind the legs and we're going to go round in a circle and blend that up into the area behind the scarecrow. A little something like this. Then we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. Change the blend mode from normal to add. And then just behind the scarecrow's legs, we're going to brighten it up just behind here. Like there's some sort of creepy light. Could be the moon, a low sort of height. Could be something like that. But just in behind here, we're brightening this up quite a bit. And I'm going to go even larger. I'm going to go up to the 28% now and just really kind of make that as kind of a big glow, but right behind our scarecrow. Then I'm going to go ahead and on the same layer, I'm going to go to my brush and I'm going to go to the option of, we're going to go to elements. We're going to go to the clouds brush. I've got my opacity set to 100% and my size set to 54. I'm going to just lightly in behind here, just add in some atmosphere with the clouds. So they're kind of like smoky almost. It's just going to fill in the background a little bit more add in some spooky atmosphere and you can get them a little bit brighter towards the center if you like, just a little something like this. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is revert back to our scarecrow and create some additional highlights. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer above our line work on the body, tap on it and clipping mask it. We're gonna set the blend mode from normal to add. We're gonna keep the same color and we're gonna change our brush to the soft airbrush under airbrushing. We're going to make that brush a little bit smaller down to something really manageable about sort of, that's probably a little bit too big. We can go even smaller than that, maybe about 4%. I want to brighten up this edge here because that's where the light source is, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and brighten up underneath. And we just add in like little glows onto the body here. So I'm brightening up under here. I'm brightening up down this sleeve because it's facing the light source quite a bit, maybe a little bit on the ends. We can then go ahead and brighten up under here as well creating like a little bit of a glow that makes its way into the body. But positioning wise, I imagine the scarecrow's kind of rotated slightly. So this edge here, it's probably not gonna get too much. At the bottom here, we can brighten up, of course, but I'm imagining that this edge here is gonna be nice and sort of quite um, dark and quite bold. So I'm gonna just bring in a little bit of glow on these edges. You can make it as big or as small as you like. And then gonna add in a little bit of a glow underneath inside the hat, just a very, very light glow in there. Lovely stuff. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go on, we can either do it on the same layer or you can do it on a separate layer. We're gonna go back to our brush and we're gonna go back to the option of drawing and the black burn. I've got a 10% brush size. I could probably reduce that down to about sort of five to be a bit more precise. I'm gonna brighten up some edges here. So I'm gonna go ahead and brighten up in here, making them nice and bright. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna brighten up this edge if it isn't already and maybe bring it in the body slightly if you need to. Underneath here, just brighten that up, right up against the material. We don't know what this spooky vibe is going on, but it's really brightening up the edge of our subject. Up here, we'll go ahead and just brighten up underneath here. Creating like a little bit of an extra highlight on there. Lovely. And then we can zoom out. Our subject is really coming along. There's another layer we need to create. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to this grass layer. We're gonna create a new layer in front of it. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab that base color for the scarecrow bottom of the third column from the right we're going to create some additional sort of areas here where it's maybe like the straw inside the uh, the hands so i'm going to go ahead and sort of block this in and then just try and create lots of sort of small strands just sticking out from here you may want to reduce the brush size down to say two percent so you can be really quite um specific with adding these in but just some additional sort of details in there Likewise, we'll do the same over here as well. We'll just sort of spike these out like they're little bits of sort of hay inside and straw that's just pointing out and you can create very small, little tiny individual ones if you want. Just the stuffing of the scarecrow sort of making its way outwards a little bit. Let's then go ahead and make the eyes glow as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. We're gonna go in the scarecrow, scarecrow group and create a new layer at the top and change the blend mode from normal to add. We're gonna to go to our colors. We're gonna to go to this color here at the top of the sixth column. And we're gonna go ahead and change our brush back to airbrushing in the soft brush. And with a small brush size, probably around about 4%, that's probably around about size wise, probably a bit too big, go three or two. We're gonna go round in a circle around these eyes and just make them have a little bit of a glow to them. And immediately they will pop. They will really, really pop. Don't make it too much of a, um, circular glow you know try and blend around it but you should end up with this really scary 
quite creepy look to the face. We're then going to change some shadows at the very front here as well to show the lighting on the ground. So we're going to go up in our layers underneath our stencil but create a new layer. We're going to go ahead and go to our colours and we're going to move into a nice dark colour. So we'll grab the base colour here for the scarecrow, this one here at the bottom of that third column. Your brush wants to still be the soft airbrush under airbrushing and we're going to go ahead with a about a 3% brush size. We're going to go ahead and create some shadows here. So we're just going to push out from here a little bit of an angle to them. And also just don't let them get super perfect lines as well. Let them be a little bit messy how they catch on different parts of the ground. That's fine. Just kind of creating that lovely shadow. And then we'll increase the brush size to about 12%. We will go to this layer and we'll tap on it and we'll clip it to the grass at the front here. And then we'll darken up the right side over here and blend it towards the center like this area over here is just really in the dark. Likewise over here, we'll darken this up, we'll blend it in towards the center, leaving a little bit of sort of that brown ground down here. And then at this point, it's just a matter of doing our little final tweaks, just where I always like to keep in like the extra things that I would change. I'm going to go ahead and create another new layer that's clipped to our scarecrow. Tap on it and clipping mask it and change the blend mode also to the option of add. I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to grab our highlight color. So this color here, the middle of that far right column. I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm going to go back to drawing and the black burn. And where I've got these little highlights here, I want to brighten these up. I want to show how bright that lighting is that's coming from behind. So I'm going to brighten this up here on top of the previous add layer. So I'm just brightening that up, showing that glow. I think then I'm also going to go ahead and I'll do it on this layer. I'm going to go ahead and maybe think about sort of brightening up a few little sort of areas here of the body just to add in little sort of additional areas of lighting that are quite nice and bright. I want it to just show a little bit more of the environmental sort of factor to it. Likewise, I'm going to go up this area here because this is a nice big brown area. I'm going to add some highlight onto there and a little bit there too. I think I'll also go ahead and go along this edge down here and kind of brighten that up. Now, if you do that, you may end up losing it and that's fine. I'm just essentially sort of sharpening up the edge. A little additional few details down here. That's fine. Now, the other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to adjust the face a little bit. I don't like quite so much the gap between the teeth and the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap on this layer. I'm going to turn off the alpha lock. I'm going to go to my adjustments. I'm going to go to liquify and the push option. And I'm just going to make it nice and small. And I'm just going to try my best just to sort of move this upwards a little bit closer towards the eyes and just adjust the face basically until I'm just quite happy with how it looks. You can go ahead and just reduce that size quite a lot smaller than that. And now I'm just pushing up the teeth and just trying to sort of keep exaggerating parts of the face until I end up with a little bit more of a creepier look to it. I'm just looking to, you know, drag the mouth out a little bit further over here and over there. I might just bring the teeth up, but I don't want the nose to get crushed in any way too. We'll bring the teeth up from the bottom as well, just so that they don't get too long and we can bring the eyes down a little bit. And this is just personal preference at this point. You're just tweaking just to try and get the creepiest kind of look that we can get. And that looks so much more aggressive. I love that. If I tap on my adjustments and then undo that for you, you can see the difference between the face change there of bringing the teeth closer to the face and the eyes. And the other additional changes, I'm going to go down to the first ad layer we created that had the soft glows on it. I'll just go to my adjustments and go to well, a brush and airbrushing and make it a little bit larger, about sort of 5%. Just get back in there and just increase some of the glows a little bit more. Just seeing if we can just add some additional areas of just bright glow. I want to have that kind of glowy look to the edge of the uh, scarecrow. So a little bit here on that shadowed area. That's fine because it won't come out quite so bright in the legs as well. I think maybe we can just in the middle, especially just sort of brighten them up a tiny bit more. So I'm going to zoom in and reduce this size down to about 2%. And just on the inside of the legs, just add in a little bit of a brighter glow to it. They are just literally final tweaks. We can then go up to our adjustments, we can go ahead and turn off our drawing guide, we can go ahead and zoom in and we can go full screen with four and we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and this kind of messy kind of painting aesthetic to it. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it and drop a like while you're down there. Subscribe for weekly Procreate tutorials and make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram as well as share them with the community that I've got over on my Discord. You can come and join, it's completely free and it's an awesome place to share your work. If you want even more tutorials from me though, you come and join me over on Patreon where I post three exclusive tutorials every single month to my Patreon supporters, as well as sneak peeks, early access to tutorials and much, much more. So hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support.
And if you like this tutorial here on YouTube, you'll like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.